today we're going to talk about density. Wait, I hear something. What? What is it, guys? Oh, yes, guys, that's a great idea. We can explain density with a solar balloon. But that's way too large. We need to go outside. Let's go to the park. We're here at the park. And it looks empty, so it's a good opportunity to inflate the balloon. Let's find out the direction where the air is blowing. It seems it's blowing that way. So we have to keep the open side that way. We're going to start. So we're going to teach these guys how to inflate a solar balloon or how to inflate a big balloon. And I need help. And I don't think they will be of much help right now. So I invited my assistant. No, not that one, not that assistant. I invited my handsome producer. He's going to be helping here. We're back. Did you like it? Look, they actually inflated the balloon. That's pretty nice. But they did it with the force. And we actually did it with science. Let me explain what we did with the concept of density. Technically, density is defined as the amount of substance per unit of volume. So what is that? Mass divided by volume. That means, for example, if we have this container and this container, what is the difference between them? This one is filled with packing peanuts. This one is filled with Lego pieces. Which one has more substance inside? This one's heavier, right? The volume is the same. They're the same size. But this one has more mass inside. If we want to calculate the density, we first have to get their mass. The mass of the one with Legos is 250 grams. The one that has the cup with packing peanuts is 50 grams. So how about the volume? The volume of these cups is 125 cubic centimeter. It's the same volume for both of them. Let me tell you what is volume, just in case you don't remember. You can have length, area, and volume. This one, this is a 1D structure, one-dimensional structure, and the length is 9 centimeters. How about if we want to calculate area? For the area, we have something like this. This is a two-dimensional structure. And the area in this case, we calculate it by multiplying the length on one side and the length on the other side. Since we say it's area, it's two-dimensional structure, we have square centimeters. How about volume? When we talk about volume, we talk about a 3D structure. This 3D structure is going to have units in cubic centimeter. In 1D we have a line, 2D we have a square, and 3D we have a cube. The cube we can actually fill it with some substance, and that is what we're talking about when we calculate density. So coming back to the example of the packing peanuts and the Legos, the density of the container having the Legos, it's going to be the mass, 250 grams, divided by the volume, 125, and that gives you 2 grams per cubic centimeter. On the other hand, the density for the container having the packing peanuts 
is going to be 50, which was the mass, divided by the volume, which was 125, the same as the other, that gave us 0.4 grams per cubic centimeter. We can see that they have different densities, even though the shape of the container was the same. Let's go back to the example of the balloon. In the case of our balloon, what is that you notice? You notice that the balloon was black, right? It is a pretty sunny day. So what happened when we were exposing the balloon to the heat? When we inflated the balloon, we put certain amount of air inside. You recall the example that we did uh, in the States of Matter video. We put certain amount of air inside and we tied a knot, right? What happened with the atoms inside? What happened when we put them inside the liquid nitrogen container? The atoms started losing energy. They started coming together, together, together until they use very little space. If instead of cooling those atoms, we heat them up, we input energy into the system, what's going to happen? We have our balloon and we inflate it. Our balloon has certain amount of atoms inside. Let's imagine we have 10 atoms inside. Those atoms are very happy in there, but right now they're being heated. So when we inflate it, it was just kind of floating in there. These atoms before being heated were under the same conditions as the atoms outside. The density of the air outside is, it is very, very small, 0 0.0013 grams per cubic centimeter or 1.3 kilograms per cubic meter. So these atoms right now are kind of at the same density as the atoms on the outside. What happened when it starts getting uh, hot? We're putting what? Energy, right? And what is that energy is going to do? Energy is going to increase the movement of the atoms inside. What is that going to do to the balloon? It's going to make it expand. So that means it's going to have higher volume. We still have the same amount of atoms inside. We didn't put more atoms inside. So we still have, as we said, imagine 10 atoms. But those atoms are now undergoing violent collisions. So the balloon expanded. That means it got bigger. So remember, density is mass divided by volume. So we have the same mass, but now we have a much larger volume. If we have a much larger volume, what's gonna happen is the density is gonna decrease. If we use the density of air, we calculate the volume of the balloon before it is heated, we can obtain the mass, that means the substance that is inside the balloon. Once we get the mass, then we can use it to calculate the density of this balloon. So now we know volume change, mass is the same, and the density is going to change. Knowing that, we know that the density of the heated balloon is going to be 0.5 kilograms per meter cube. We said that the density of air is 1.3. The density of the heated balloon is 0.5. What is that telling you? That is telling you that the density of the heated balloon is less. Since it is less, this one is going to rise. And that's what you saw there. People like to say hot air rises. In reality, the correct term is less dense air rises. That is, per unit volume, you have less atoms in here, that's why it's gonna rise. It's gonna rise because it's lighter than air. How can you use this knowledge? Is density actually useful for something? Do you know of practical applications? Density is a very important parameter. It is the reason why boats float. It is why um, submarines can sink and they can come back up. In the case of boats, for example, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. If we have the weight of the boat concentrated in a little sphere like this one, it's going to sink. How about if we have the same amount of substance, that means mass, but in a different shape? Now it's going to float. That's the same with the boat. If we concentrate all the weight in one area, it's going to sink, but if we spread it, it's going to float. We have a lot of empty space inside, so the density is going to be less and it's going to float in water. In the case of submarines, have you ever wondered how they go down and they, they come up? When they're going down, they have some tanks and they fill those tanks with water. So it is like you fill the whole 
both with water plus the weight of the steel and the weight of the water, it's gonna go down. So it's gonna sink. That same thing is happening with the submarine. So now they are down there, and then how do they do it to come back up? Well, they have some tanks with air, but they use that air to expel the water out of the tanks, and now they leave the tanks empty. Well, not empty, but they with air. And since the air is much lighter than the water, we said that the density of air was what? 1.3 kilograms per cubic meter. Now it rises, just like the heated balloon did. When it's less dense, it rises. The same thing will happen with the submarine. There are many other applications for the concept of density. Can you use density for another application? Let me know what you come up with. See you next Friday. Remember, we're going to be uploading videos every Friday. See you.